Hello, biology students, and welcome back. This is our kind of our first um, video in, in what hopefully will be not too very many. Um, believe me, I'd much rather have you here in school with me. We, we miss you very much. I know I say that from all of the teachers here. So, um, But as far as ecology, this is, uh, I, today we're just going to kind of go over food webs, so I think pretty non-stressful here. Um, jot these things down in your notebooks, which hopefully you have with you. Um, I think we kind of already talked about the concept of autotrophs and things that make their own energy from, usually from sunlight, but we could also be talking about these chemosynthetic organisms um, at deep, deep ocean vents um, where that sulfur is released into the ocean and there's organisms that can use that sulfur and it's this whole food chain that's completely independent from, from the sun. Um, and all right, so if we start to uh, further classify, so if you're not an autotroph, then you're some type of heterotroph. So organisms that eat other things um, to get their energy can't really make energy from the sun. Um, so obviously we are heterotroph. But there's there's further classification that we can go into. So if you, if you are a plant eater, or in the case of those deep ocean vent um, communities, if you eat the things that can harvest that energy from the sulfur, um, but for the for the most of the time we're talking about plants, things that are photosynthetic. So that makes you a primary um, consumer. We also say. A first level consumer. If you eat only first level consumers, then you are a second level consumer or secondary consumer or level two consumer. We also have third level and fourth level. Quaternary, that might be ERY, I don't remember. Um, but but third level and fourth level, those tertiary quaternary. So this is level three, this is level four. Once in a while we see level five, but we're going to talk later about why we don't really see that very often. Um, further classification even even more. So these um, these heterotrophs can be classified into what level of consumer they are. That's one way to sort of subclassify. But we also can classify organisms by what they eat. So if you eat only plants, you are a primary consumer, but you are also an herbivore. So things like, right, deer, um, rabbits, some insects, Those are all herbivores. If you are something that eats only consumers, so only animals, then you are a carnivore. And we know in this area, we're typically talking about wolves, coyotes. If you live somewhere else, you might be talking about lions and tigers and that kind of stuff, okay? Omnivores, remember earlier when we talked about generalists and specialists and we said specialists kind of only have one kind of food source that they prefer maybe or they're very limited. Omnivores can eat every, or not everything, but lots of a very wide variety. So omnivores actually can eat both plant and animal. So technically we are omnivores because we can eat both. Um, but we, I know we mentioned bears color, that'd be beers, that's not what we're doing, bears, raccoons, and so on. Um, when we talk about scavengers, so scavengers are consumers that can feed on dead things, like vultures. And we actually have a lot of animals that can feed on can feed on dead things. Um, vultures typically 
I think, only probably feed on dead things, but they're opportunistic, like they would. So things that can feed on dead things are, um, obviously, wolves and coyotes can do that too. Eagles can do that too. They have lots of um, um, bacteria and stuff in their stomachs that, like, if we ate on something that had been dead a long time, we'd get pretty sick from that, right? Like, we're pretty wimpy. Like, we get food poisoning if something's left out of the refrigerator too long. Scavengers have special you know, strong acid and strong, um, enzymes in their stomach and that can, that, so they don't get sick when they eat those dead things. And I'm just going really quickly. If you need to pause this, remember, this is a video. You pause where you need to. Decomposers, organisms that break down dead tissue and waste into carbon, hydrogen, nitrogen, oxygen, phosphorus, sulfur, and all the elements that are available in our world. It's important, I think, to remember that all things in our world are present at a constant level meaning that we have the same amount of carbon on our world always. It's not like we're getting more carbon from outer space or that we're losing any to outer space. What we have here is a constant supply, and that's true of all of these elements, the hydrogen, the nitrogen, the oxygen, all of it. It just simply gets tied up into different forms. Um, so living things, you know, plants kind of absorb these dissolved things from the, from the soil, and then... Um, you know, build these molecular structures. And then when we eat the plants, we get this stuff. But when things die, decomposers break those things down and return them back to the world. So things that are decomposers are obviously bacteria. Um, fungi. like mushrooms. Um, sometimes insects can be decomposers, right? Because they, they eat dead things and then um, they, they break it down that way. So those are all decomposers. And again, super important in our world in order to make things available to be taken up again. So I'm going to go, using the information from that previous page, I'm going to go through and use a... Um, use those terms to make a food web. And you actually have a worksheet to do on this too. So once you watch this video, please just do the food web worksheet that's linked on the HyperDoc in Google Classroom. Um, so print that off and then, um, and then turn that in. So here is, we're gonna do a food web. So we tend to do food webs instead of food chains because it, I'll show you like, it, things are just more interrelated. A food chain sort of says this eats this and then this eats that, and it's this very linear relationship. We know that that's not really true. In any food chain, we start with some type of producer. So I'm just going to be really general. We're going to start with grass. And then we're going to determine, okay, so the things in our environment, just keeping it kind of local. What kinds of things eat grass? We have many things that feed on grass in an environment. It might be a rabbit. Could be a grasshopper. So these two things are first level consumers, right? We would say the grass is a producer. The rabbit is a first level consumer, and so is the grasshopper. First level consumer. Let's see, what could possibly eat a rabbit? Maybe a fox, right? And then what might eat a grasshopper? Maybe a bird. But if I think about this, probably the fox would probably also eat the bird, right? You will notice, and, I, and this is super important, the arrows point in the direction of energy transfer. The fox is getting energy from the bird, so the energy that's stored in the bird is being transferred to the fox. So now let's label our... Um, let's label these really quickly so I don't forget. So any the rabbit is eaten by a fox. That makes the fox a 
second level consumer, and so is the bird second level consumer, but uh-oh, when the bird is eaten by the fox, now the fox is also a third level consumer. And here's how, here's how I know that. So if I go, let me pick a different color. Let's do, let's do blue. So the rabbit is one step away, one feeding level away from the grass. That's why it's a first level. The fox is one, two steps away from the grass. That makes it a second, secondary consumer or second level consumer. The fox is also one, two, three levels away from the grass if I follow this. So the if I follow this set of arrows. And so that makes that fox both a second and a third level consumer. I also, so for the worksheet, you also have to label, so this is super simple, um, a super simple um, visualization, an example of that. So I also can go back, I'm going to pick a different color that I haven't used. I also can label these as P for producer. Well, I've already labeled my producer right here, but I also, um, for the food web that you're going to do, you also need to label as herbivore, carnivore, or omnivore. Let me see. Let's say that, I don't know, I have to think about if I have an omnivore here. Let's say that my bird also eats grass seed, okay? So I also, so the bird also is a first level consumer, right? Now, if I go back and label these, um, so everything that eats grass is an herbivore. So the rabbit is an herbivore. The grasshopper is an herbivore. The bird is both an herb herbivore, and but it also, we said it also will eat, um, it eats grasshoppers. So this actually is an omnivore. The bird is an omnivore. By the way, make sure you're labeling next to the organism and don't label on the arrow. That doesn't make any sense. We're labeling the actual um, organism here. So herbivore, and the fox is clearly a carnivore. He's just a cold-blooded meat-eating killer. Well, he's not cold-blooded. He's warm-blooded, but you know what I mean. That's cold. Um, so that's exactly what's expected on the worksheet. This is exactly what I expect you to do. And then the bottom part of the worksheet, please don't forget, you have to create your own food web using the organisms given on the bottom. And it's okay if everybody's is a little bit different because sometimes, you know, for example, how big the king snake is might determine what will eat it. Um, so it's okay. Please don't be confused. Just do your best um, and, we'll, uh, and we'll turn that in. All right. Good luck on your food web.